morning, everyone. Welcome to the Church of the Valley. Welcome to those of you who are watching on Facebook Live. And again, as I say each week, welcome to those who are on their way in. We'll be here in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> Today, we are going to be looking at the theme of the gift that God has given us by, this, by the gift of this earth and all that we are called to do because of that. So you'll be seeing that theme throughout the service today. So uh, let us begin that theme and standing as we're able and singing together all creatures of our God and King.
the faith that we have in Jesus. So everyone's faith journey begins somewhere. And your faith in Jesus starts off pretty small. You got a little Jesus. You got a little Jesus in your life. This one dances. And you're like, hey, you know what? This Jesus guy, he's pretty cool. You know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm glad that he's around. I, I like him. And as our, our faith journey starts to go get further along, our faith in Jesus gets a little bit bigger. So we have a little bigger faith in Jesus. Oh, I guess I'm starting to embrace him just a little bit. Oh, this is really nice. You know, like, I think I'm going to start being more like Jesus. Like, you know, approachable, cuddly, all that fun stuff. And it's when we get a little further along, we're like, wow, I really want to start fully embracing my faith in Jesus. And it gets even bigger. Dante, could you bring me my big faith in Jesus? <laughs> it's like a reverse footprints. <laughs> oh. It was then I carries you. Thank you for bringing me my big faith in Jesus. This is so nice. Now that I've fully embraced Jesus, I'm just like, oh, I'm so comforted. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so glad of Jesus in my life. But know that wherever you are in your faith journey, there's always room to grow. And your faith in Jesus can get even bigger than big Jesus here. So wherever you are, I'm glad that you're here. And you're here now. And wherever big or small your faith in Jesus is, that's all right by me. Would you guys like to pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to walk along in our journeys of faith. And we know that no matter where we are, there is another set of footprints that are walking with us, which is our friend, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Who would like to carry Jesus out? <laughs> it's Oliver. I think Oliver wants to carry Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>
And then the Tijuana Home Build is Saturday, October 26th. And I believe we have a presentation. Is that now?
I won't call her this week because she's supposed to do community meditation and stewardship on it next week, so we'll see. Oh, yeah. She should be better by then. Okay, all okay. right. We'll all sit that far. Um, <laughs> prayers, prayers for Donna, uh, who's family got COVID, and also for Jerry Clark, who is under the weather. Rick Gower, for prayers for Denise Munger Smith, family member had surgery on Thursday. Prayer, uh, prayers for good healing. Also from Rick, Bill Tate, prayers for him and his family following the passing of a family member. Anybody else have anything that they'd like to lift up? Rick. Yes. Um, also, you know, the, the Broadway community has lost some 
couple, a few cherished uh, members of the past couple weeks in the dance community uh, that we prayed for a couple weeks ago. So just prayers for all the, the theater folk who have lost loved ones. And uh, Gavin Creel um, passed away yeah. last Sunday. Yeah. Just a great, great presence, and he lived his life to the fullest, so it's, it's, it's hard to see. Anyone else? All right, if you're more comfortable remaining in your seat as we go to prayer, I invite you to do that. But if you'd like to come forward and kneel on the stairs behind me, I invite you to do that as well. Bless you. so grateful for this time. We go through this week and we carry with us our concerns. We carry with us worries. We carry with us uh, not knowing what, what is to come for those who we have on our minds and on our hearts. And sometimes it's ourselves that we are uh, worried about. We lift up so many today both of our morning services that are facing struggles, that have uh, recently faced struggles and are working through, they are facing struggles now. We see uh, concerns about cancer and, and bodies that are failing and in need of healing. And all of those who are in need, we lift up to you because we have spent the last week with these concerns on our hearts. And it is only you that can take them and lift them from us. We know that the doctors and those in leadership positions in our world have some power, but ultimately we lift this up to you because you have the ultimate direction. You have the ultimate healing power. And you have the ultimate love to make each and every one of these requests come to a wholeness. So we bring them all to you. Those who are sick, those who are mourning a loss, those who are looking at obstacles ahead of them that were unexpected. And we ask for you to bring our peace to each of them. And let us not forget about the caregivers that are next to each and every one of these that are being uh, lifted up today. The caregivers sometimes go on song but it is important that we lift them up and give them strength as well. We have officially entered into this time of our election, and some of us have even received our ballots in the mail. It is officially only a month away, and this is the time when we can enter into conversations, whether it's in person or online or however it is, with people who disagree with us. And that's going to happen. We're going to disagree. Even people who agree with us on many things, we will find will disagree with us on some. What we need to remember for this next month is that we are equally loved by God. When we come across someone who we see as an opposition or an opposing opinion, we must remember that we are equally loved by God. And discussion and dialogue is so important. We must remember that we can learn from one another even if we disagree. We must remember that there is so much about us that, yes, is different and we can celebrate, but there is so much about us that is the same. The values that we want, the things that we want out of life, the things that we want for our loved ones are so similar with even those who, with whom we disagree. Let us bring that sense of unity beyond our country to this world as well. And let us, as we see the, 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 the wars continue on television that have been going on for so long, so long, let us feel a sense of unity come across this world. Wave 
your, your love across this world and let us feel it. Let those who are, who are fighting with one another, who are at battle with one another, feel your love and feel the unity that you wish for us as a world. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who sets an example and teaches us daily. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. place, 
after giving thanks, he took the bread and broke it and said, take, eat, each of you, this is my body. And he took the cup and said, this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this meal and the time we have to share it together. Let us take this moment to reflect and spend all of our moments with love and kindness as we go out today and throughout the week. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Will the service come forward, please? in remembrance of Christ. Well, we're hitting this time of year. Um, my homework is a very big thing. Um, my son, Adam, is taking three AP classes for the first time. And he's doing a great job. But we had, had quite a day yesterday. He's working on a, uh, was working on a thesis for a paper. Um, and, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> so it's a lot for us. Um, but a lot of what we're working on then is um, he's so concerned about grades at this point that it's, it's the beginning, right? It's the beginning of these new classes. Some of it's just about learning. The teachers are just testing them on learning and things like that. So anyway, he was working on his thesis. We had to take a little break, and so I pulled out my phone. You know, because I'm like, I need a break. And I swear, technology right now, phones are listening to us. Because we've been talking about writing and thesis and all that stuff. And what's the first thing that pops up when I need a break? Something about writing. I'm like, well, I guess I'll read it. And I'm like, uh, actually, this story is kind of great. Um, it's kind of an example of, uh, it's a perfect elder story. And I think an example of um, inner stewardship. Um, and I think the writers on this. So in 2006, a high school English teacher asked him to write a famous author and asked for advice. Kurt Vonnegut was the only one to respond, and here's his response. Dear Xavier High School and Ms. Lockwood, and Messrs. Perrin and Feely, Batten Moore, 
and could use them. I thank you for your friendly letters. You should have had to cheer up a really old geezer, 84, in his sunset years. I don't make public appearances anymore because I now resemble nothing so much as a blonde. <laughs> what I have to say to you, moreover, would not take long to wait. Practice any art, music, singing, dancing, acting, drawing, painting, sculpting, poetry, fiction, essays, reportage, no matter how well or badly. Not to get money and fame, but to experience becoming. To find out what's inside you to make your soul grow. Seriously, I mean, start right now. Do art and do it for the rest of your lives. Draw on your next picture of Ms. Lockwood and give it to her. Dance home after school and sing in the shower and on and on. Make a face in your mashed potatoes. Pretend you're Count Dracula. Here's an assignment for tonight. I hope Ms. Lockwood will flunk you if you don't do it. Write a six-line poem about anything, but rhymed, no fair tennis without a net. Make it as good as you possibly can, but don't tell anybody what you're doing. Don't show it or recite it to anybody, not even your girlfriend or boyfriend or parents or whatever. Or Ms. Lockwood, okay? Tear it up into teeny weeny pieces and discard them into a white and to widely separated trash receptacles. You will find that you have already been gloriously rewarded for your poem. You have experienced becoming. Learned a lot more about what's inside you, and you have made your soul grow. God bless you all. Now I love this, so. Let's experience becoming sometime this week. And you can start at church. Look, I know you always wanted to try choir, right? It's not about getting up and being a star, right? Crazy? Good time to do choir. I see you want to build. Um, food pantry. You, you guys have already helped get a, a youth room. There's so many things you can do to help with the youth program. But bring your talent somewhere new. I mean, in this next year, I know I'm finishing my term as an elder. There's going to be elder slots available. It's time to start thinking about that. Be an elder, you can be on the board. Um, so, anyway, anything and everything that you can give here at the church, we appreciate. We thank you so much for your giving and your time. And you can always visit our boxes up here front and uh, go the other way. Thank you. Let us thank God for the gifts we will receive. Most holy God, we do give thanks for each gift that we receive that allows us to continue to do the wonderful ministries of this church. The, the ministries that are new, the ministries that we haven't even begun, and the ministries like Tijuana Homeville that go back many, many years. It is only because of the generosity of those who come to this place each week that we are able to do your work, and for that we are so grateful. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Now take a moment and greet someone that you don't know, greet someone that you know, greet everyone, and then go back to your seats when you hear the music.
We're told to help our children have a better understanding of responsibility and consequences of not showing proper care. So really, the instructions looked at teaching kids to maintain their space by caring for their space. And this week when I was looking at these instructions, and I was realizing that these instructions were for kids, but I then realized that they are perfect instructions for everyone when it comes to something that God has entrusted to us. The words from Genesis that I wrote, read a moment ago are words that call for care. The passage begins by giving praise to God, and then, and then it goes on and talks about us having dominion over the earth. Dominion over what God has created, the earth, the animals, the birds, fish of the sea. And it's this part of the scripture where we have many disagreements. Many people disagree on this part of the scripture. Dominion over what God has created. For some, the word dominion has been quite problematic. We even heard it earlier in the service today when we read Psalm 8. There are those who would argue that God is giving us dominion over the world, over the earth, and over its inhabitants, so therefore this is a free ticket. This is a free ticket for us to treat the planet, or to treat plant life, or for us to treat the animals, and the birds, and the fish of the world in any way that we please. Merriam-Webster's dictionary describes dominion as having supreme authority. So for some, supreme authority means that God has given us permission or even called us to treat our planet and its inhabitants in any way that suits us, any way that makes our lives easier, any way that benefits uh, humanity regardless of what it's doing to the planet or to life residing on the planet. Pollution, overfishing, overhunting, deforestation. Move this over. Oh, all right, no, we're back. <laughs> Pollution, overfishing, overhunting, deforestation, CO2 emissions, our use of pesticides, fracking, and so many other habits to some can be easily explained away through the belief that the dominion that God has given us allows us to do pretty much anything that we want to this planet and to its inhabitants. After all, dominion means having the supreme authority. And this is true. We have been given supreme authority. But first and foremost, the responsibility of the one given supreme authority is to provide care. Just look at the example of our relationship with God. The supreme authority that God holds over each and every one of us is played out through God's care of each and every one of us. Our God, who holds such power, uses that power to provide for us, to watch over us, and to care for us. And through God's example, we are called to do the same for this earth. This earth and all that is upon it is an unbelievable gift from God. For our time here on this planet, God has provided us with a place of wonder and of beauty. This earth is our home. And our home provides us with all we need to sustain us. Food to eat, and water to drink, and the warmth of the sun. And the other living things are a part of the cycle that keeps our planet in a position to rejuvenate itself, to provide for those who will come after us. We have been called to care. We have been called to care for the environment, for other life that shares this planet, for the air, and for the seas. And this call isn't something that should be taken lightly. Being a caregiver involves sacrifice. It involves focus. But being a caregiver is also something that needs to be done out of love. For any of you who have been a caregiver, for anyone for a length of time, you know exactly what I mean. When we care for our loved ones, they look to us to provide for them in areas that they can no longer provide for themselves. An enormous amount of trust is placed on the caregiver. And the caregiver must, also, must always be acting from a place of selflessness. The caregiver has all the strength, and yet the caregiver must use that strength to better the one receiving the care. No time limits, and no limitations on what needs to be done. This is the same type of care that we have been called 
to provide for our earthly home. And there are so many ways that we can provide care. You know, the chemicals that we use both in our households and in our yards play a part in affecting our world. We need to be careful when we choose our products for cleaning and for gardening. The containers that we use for our food and our water, they have an effect. You know, we can make a big difference on really cutting down on single-use plastics. Recycling is a great way to uh, stop filling up our landfills. I can't tell you how much paper and envelopes we have saved since we started using the recycle reuse bins. We used to just throw away the, the, the envelopes at the end of the day or at the end of the service, or you take them home and get rid of them. Now they get reused. Also, one of the best ways to help wildlife is to preserve the, the environment in which the animals live. Caring for this earth provides a safe place for animals to live and to thrive. When we buy, we should be buying responsibly and not supporting companies that supply products made from endangered animals or their parts. In addition, we should pitch in when, they, when it comes to trash. Trash isn't only ugly, it's harmful. You know, we, we hear about animals getting their heads stuck in, in those plastic rings and, and other animals ingest garbage. Sea animals can get caught in nets. Besides, trash pollutes everyone's natural resources. So it's important to put trash in its place, even sometimes if that trash wasn't ours. And of course, another easy way to contribute is to financially support organizations that help protect animals and help protect this earth, like PETA or World Wildlife Fund or Rainforest Alliance, just a few. Protecting our earth and its inhabitants isn't simply a cause, it is not a trendy fad. Protecting our earth and its life is, 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 is vital for its survival. It's not really a choice. It's something that we have to do, and it's something that we've been called to do by God. We have been given a responsibility as individuals and as communities of faith. We have been given dominion, and that dominion is a call for care. You know, International Earth Day occurs each April, April 22nd to be exact. Jill's shaking her head. She's like, check, check, check. She's like, that's right. That's right, April 22nd. But I purposely chose to talk about our responsibility towards our planet in October as well. Because October is six months on either side of our established Earth Day. We couldn't be farther from Earth Day. And I did it for a point, to make a point. The fact is, we can't be reminded simply once a year of the importance of our role as caregivers. The call is too important. The point I wanted to make is that every day, every day is Earth Day. So let us all take a good look at what we are doing that is affecting our Earth and its life. And let's look for ways that we can adjust our habits so that we become, they become more... Uh, become behaviors and routines that are more aligned with care. This is our home. Our home provided to us through the love of God. May we all thank God. May we all thank God through our actions and through changes that we make and through the way we care for this beautiful gift of our earth. We pray for you. Holy God, we are so grateful for the world you have provided. Allow us to see it through your eyes. Allow us to find it within ourselves to care for our surroundings the way that you care for us. We thank you for your presence in our lives. Help us to see you in all that we see and all that we do. Be with those gathered here today. Keep us safe and healthy until we return to this place next time. So in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Would you please stand and sing as you're able, indescribable.